Hello, my fellow Metagridians around the world. Can I say that, Metagridians? Yeah, Metagrid Pro users around the world. My name is Paul. This is my studio, Warsaw, Poland. Hope you're doing great. I'm actually having a great day. I don't know why. I'm just enjoying myself in the studio. Also, I'm enjoying myself because Metagrid Pro helps me really a lot, guys. My new grids for uh, new window and cubase speed up things massively. Recently, I had to do a TV show 45 minutes long. Normally, I would say that the working time on this is 16 hours. I was able to complete this without compromising the quality in 10 hours. And I'm perfectly aware that it was possible thanks to Metagrid Pro. And guys, that's the reason today I'd like to show you my particular grids that I created. So you're gonna see an example, a living organism Metagrid Pro Plus DAW, which is new Endo 12 this time. And you're gonna see on a very real example why it's so great to use it in the studio. Let's go. And for the purposes of today's demonstration, I decided to extend my setup. Here's gonna be one more camera so that you're gonna see my iPads. Here you're gonna see what I'm exactly doing using uh, them. And let's switch to new window actually. And yes, this is my left iPad, this is my right iPad. I have two separate views for left and right devices. And we're gonna start with the right one. As you can see, I try to keep it as clear, as informative as possible. It's split into some sections and the top left section is the file section. Here I open, close the projects, create new projects, backup them, import, export, AAF, OMF, track, archive and more. And actually using this, let's open a project. And I'm gonna just open anything because I'm not gonna play to you anyway. No copyright infringement of any way, of any kind. Uh, there we go. This is the project. Some dialogue tracks, SFX music tracks. It's a TV show. I told you about that. I did it in 10 hours, actually. Yeah, this is the, the best material to show you my, uh, my grids right now, probably. And as I told you guys, I can import, export things from there. Uh, when clicking this, they are opening actually in front of me on a separate screen. So we're not going to focus on this, maybe. But these are simply key shortcuts to open, close, import, export, save, etc, etc. This is the top left section. Then we've got track creation section that is here, guys. And I'm going to show it to you <clears throat> like this, maybe. So I can add audio track and I can choose the format of, of this track. Or instead, I can simply add a mono track like this. I can add a MIDI track a marker track, of course. I can also add a group, but I can add this group, not just like group, but when I select some audio tracks and I create a group, this group is going to be already assigned to the channels I selected. Same story, I can tra uh, create an FX track and I can also add a video track, new window, lets you have two video tracks. Actually, going down, there's also track a section like global global track operations section, I would say. So here I can enable or disable track. I can lock or unlock it from accidental editing, for example. I can also duplicate a track, but actually I made a macro uh, for duplicating tracks because it's gonna be like this. When duplicating, I remove the content, the track is duplicated, but the content is not duplicated, so I can put new content using the same channel settings. And this macro is kind of a simple one. As you know, probably already, you can uh, use uh, um, Cubase ready-made uh, commands. Uh, Metagrid Pro comes with a lot of Cubase, not only Cubase, also other DAW and other software ready commands that you can use. So I choose duplicate tracks from the ready Cubase presets. Then I made a short pause after uh, duplicating the tracks. Sometimes it's needed. It's it's nothing. It's got nothing to do with Metagrid. It's more the Nuendo Cubase thing. It sometimes needs some time to perform something correctly. Then I select all the content on the duplicated track, and then I delete this content. A very 
easy yet helpful macro when working, for example, with TV shows, when time is somehow your enemy, and with Metagrid Pro you can make it your ally and finish in 10 hours, really. This is impressive, guys. <laughs> anyway, uh, then I can, of course, delete a track. I can convert tracks from mono to multi and from multi to mono. I can hide tracks. I can delete empty tracks in uh, in the projects when I want to make a cl quick cleanup. I can create a new version of a track. I can delete this version. I can move through versions and I can also render tracks just render with the current settings or, you can, or I can open a dialogue window for settings and then render the track. It's of course made with a separate color, the icons color, the background color, so that the sections of this grid are really visible and, and clear to me. Then there is a mixer section because in Nuendo Cubase you can do, redo, undo separately for your mixer. I'm gonna actually open the mixer here. As you can see, some tracks are frozen, some uh, tracks are not frozen. Mm, and uh, actually, when I, for example, want to remove this, then I can do mixer undo, it's gonna get back. I can load some channel settings, also it appeared in a separate window. I can save also channel settings that I have here. I can bypass all inserts, I can bypass the master bus uh, or only sense, or I can bypass the channel strip. That's of course here in the Nuendo Cubase mixer, guys. Then I can freeze and unfreeze tracks. It was not possible to make it a key command. In some previous versions of Cubase Nuendo, finally it's possible to freeze it with a command. Very helpful, very nice. I can toggle my time base here. I can edit channel settings also. And then I can edit a VST instrument if it's of course loaded. Then I can solo mute my tracks or solo mute, read, write, enable the whole project as well. So this is like the mixer section, let's say. And then at the very bottom, I've got some global settings for my whole Nuendo Cubase environment. So th these are the Nuendo Cubase devices like Mixer, Video Window, which popped out uh, out there, uh, Media Pool, uh, or Media Bay, or I can have my project set up here. I can have my preferences here also, they appeared in a separate window. I can see my key commands, I can see my audio connections, there's my studio setup here, uh, and then there are my MIDI remote uh, devices with a nice new mapping assistant, a very nice thing, new, new versions of Nuendo and Cubase. Then there's my VST plugins manager and my project sync setup, and this is the main, the core of my global, let's say, operations that I do on everyday basis. There's also a strip down the page, but we're gonna talk about it later on. Now let's get to our left iPad, which has got some editing operations. And why it's on the left? Because I can operate my mouse together with performing some editing on my timeline. This is really very helpful. Doing this on the right pad wouldn't be that convenient as on a I'm a right-handed guy, simply. Let's switch to the left, left iPad then. Boom, there you go. And top left is the automation settings when I can show the automation of the project or I can hide it or I can delete automation in the project. When I'm doing a TV show like this, sometimes the picture editors, they do their draft a volume and panic automation on the project, I can delete it right away just after loading it and having it on my time timeline. Then I have some settings for following the project. I can change my grid base. I can change my quantize type here. I can exchange my time formats here, like from frames to bars and beats. Then I can add markers and I can add cycle markers. I can name my markers. I can snap to grid or snap to zero points, guys. Then I can, well, let's do it on a living example. Maybe I'm going to change the color so it's better visible like this. I can do some automatic fade in and fade out, or I can select a chunk of my timeline and I can adjust the fades just to the range I selected, for example. Then I can do some more stuff just regarding fades. I can cut so-called tail or head. I can see that I've got 
tail twice, so I will have to correct it because I've got one more button free to um, arrange it for something else. This is also a, actually good news. Then top right corner is selection of things and moving it between the tracks. So I can select everything to the project start or I can select it to the project end. I can also invert my selection like this or I can take some stuff that I selected and I can move it to cursor as you can see. Then I can move selected things to a different track. I can also can move it uh, to a different track and to a different position you see like this. It's also a simple macro I'm gonna show you. What I do first is that I move the cursor then I make a pause and then I move to a selected track. I actually made a separate key command for this. I can group, ungroup, I can turn group editing on, I can set spacer between clips, very useful when working for game audio sounds or game audio dialogues. For example, then going to the left, I've got some operations that I do on clips audio operations that I do on clips. So this is my direct offline processing window. Direct offline processing is a cool, really cool thing in Nuendo and Cubase. Then I can apply my favorite surgical EQ on clips, which is Kerhoff. Uh, then I can do Doppler effect. Mm, then I have some separate audio components, mainly from Isotop RX for dialogue editing. Then the central part is also for audio, but these are not like direct offline plugins. These are like tools and utilities that I do on my audio. Like I can bounce, I can adjust gain pitch time, I can reverse the sound, I can invert the face, I can stereo flip the sound, I can detect silence, it's like uh, offline clip based gating for my files that's gonna cut them on the timeline. Then guys, I can remove DC offset resample, I can use something called randomizer, which is also cool for game audio, it's gonna randomize the pitch, the offset of a separate sound only. I can generate my test tones, and then I can create, calculate, and split so-called hit points of the sound. And the very top right is the MIDI section. I changed the project just to show you some MIDI operations. Uh, here are my drums. I totally disorganized the first bar. Now I can quantize it. I can quantize length as well and ends of my sounds. It's possible in MIDI and Cubase. Uh, I can uh, do the transpose velocity, I can choose the fixed velocity for all my sounds, and then I can make them play legato, for example, or I can reverse all my MIDI like this. Mm, I can delete double notes and delete CCs if they are out there in my MIDI clips. I can delete certain notes, I can turn on score editor, which is not the best one maybe, but hey, I still own Dorical, also by Steinberg, it's cool. Don't tell anybody, there's my drum editor, and there are my expression maps, which are also really, really helpful. Guys, that's it, that was the speediest run through my <laughs> grids I could imagine. And also I told you there's the strip on the bottom of the page, and these are actually different grids for Nuendo. You can create this actually using scenes. I, hey, I think I've shown that to you in the previous episode. It's also cool, but this is more like my style, my, my simple simply my preference of doing things. So yeah, this, this is the main grid. And then I've got some plugins for mixing, mastering, sound design. And guys, also this is huge and this is great. I used to have Touch Portal separate application for this. I don't need this and I'm happy to announce and report to you if you're using Touch Portal for this, that Metagrid Pro handles this better than Touch Portal. It's faster, it's more efficient, creating the grids is very fast, they look great and they behave great, guys. So I'm gonna show you how it works and also you're gonna see a strip on the top of the page and these are the sections of my plugins. Mixing plugins, stereo mono 5.1 versions. 
Mixing 2 Stereo Mono 5.1, Mastering Plugins Stereo Mono 5.1, same for sound design and restoration plugins, they sometimes have their separate mono stereo and surround versions. They are organized into some categories like EQing, uh, smart plugins, compressors, limiters, analyzers and stuff. And when switching here, I'm also getting to the plugin pages. By default, these are stereo versions, but how does this work? It works the way, guys, that normally I have to click the mouse, write the name of the plugin, press enter, and then I get it. Well, I can delete it from here too, but now I can do it like this. I need a Kerhoff, I need my pull tag, and I'm gonna probably need also LA2A Silver, which is my favorite one. And this all happens just with one click. When mixing especially, this is a massive speed up. Like my all my go-to plugins organized like this on separate pages, while I can still very quickly go to the editing section or to the global section, because I have the same here. I have copied all my, all, all my mixing, mastering, sound design plugins here. It's the same mirror view. Mm, mm, and guys, <laughs> what should I say? It's amazing. There's one thing you need to install to make it work. And this is a mouse click emulator you have to install to make it work. I installed something called Simply Mouse Emulator. It's here. And as you can read in the manual, it uses my keypads for mouse commands. So left mouse button, right mouse button, middle mouse button, moving also the mouse. I can even emulate mouse wheel and toggle mouse button. So it's like a complete, I'm only using clicking the left mouse button for now, which is keypad number one when this app is installed. And that means that when creating my macros for plugins here, I'm gonna show you. I'm simply using keypad one and my metagrids send the input to the mouse emulator to perform a virtual click, guys. Then I simply write the name of the plugin I, I'm interested in, and then I press enter, guys, which is quite amazing. The last page are my VST instruments, also my favorite ones organized into some categories like synths, keys, strings, wind uh, and brass instruments, percussive instruments, and some other instruments. This is my basic composer producer toolkit. And guys, mm, <laughs> again, that was fast as lightning. And guys, maybe that's the time to sum the things up. And well, what should I say? I simply hope that you liked my grades, that you found them inspiring, that you liked the idea and my thinking about uh, creating my basic grids, because these are still the basics. I'm going to create more. I'm going to create my uh, separate uh, mixer. I'm going to create my separate MIDI grid, for example. I'm going to create my audio editing grid. That's also what's going to happen. And uh, guys, I also hope that you're creating your grids and that you experience this same thing that I do, uh, which means that you simply speed up your workflows, you actually create new ways of working with whatever you do, because this is what Metagrid Pro is all about, I think, exploring new ways of working and improving the old ones. Take care, I'm gonna see you very soon, next time I'm gonna show you some macros.